this episode of Oregon Inlet, we're going to be putting together all the puzzle pieces and wrapping up 2022. Every prehistoric village had a monster that plagued their existence. The fishing village is Juan Cheese, and that monster is Oregon Inlet. Juan Cheese is just it was a great place to live and grow up, you know, and it was a big fishing village here for years and years, but it's kind of slapped up now, you know. But my Lord, they, they packed a many of fish around here, croakers and flounders and you name it. Anything come from the north, we all come in Oregon Inlet, you know. At one point, Juan Cheese's skyline was a water tower and outriggers, dozens of them. Trawl boats lined up next to each other. Now there's two or three. There used to be two or three tied to each other. Juan Cheese used to carry this county, and now the county doesn't seem to carry Juan Cheese. East of the creek was originally marshland. Where did the boats come in? Right there. And where do they come in now? They're coming over here now. Because that's been dredged out, and that's been filled in. In 1981, the federal government completed the Juan Cheese Seafood Industrial Park. The Juan Cheese Seafood Industrial Park would solidify Juan Cheese as a seafood hub of the region, giving the fishermen and their families the tools to handle the projected prosperity. Which everybody objected to when it was being done. Said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Don't worry about that. We got fish houses. We can operate with what's in there. Get the inlet stabilized, and then boats can use it. Then we'll build the infrastructure inshore. And they did not do that. They went the other way. They spent money that should have been used for the jetties to build the harbor. <laughs> now you got a inlet that you can't get to the harbor with, so what the hell good is it? There was a name change and a game change. The east side of the creek started to fill in with businesses that weren't necessarily seafood. The jetties never made it past the blueprint stage. And every year, Juan Cheese falls closer and closer to the wayside. We always said the big dogs win the fight. So I guess the, you know, the harbors, I never would have thought this harbor would be like this for recreation boats now. The Manio Shallow Back Bay project came into play in the 1970s. You have some name of the project. That's the official Corps of Engineers name. It connected all the elements in Dare County. Manio, Juan Cheese, Thunder Point, deep water on the end of the San Pablo side. That was the focal point of the initial effort called the Manio Shallow Back Bay project. The project proposal called for a dual jetty system to stabilize the dangers of Oregon Inlet. Waterman and Juan Cheese made several trips to D.C. to advocate for a stabilized inlet. And the Juan Cheese Seafood Festival was founded to raise money and awareness for the stabilization of Oregon Inlet. We were at this year's festival and we had an opportunity to speak with the festival chairman, Rich Novak. The festival, Juan Cheese Seafood Festival, started roughly 10 years ago. Matter of fact, this was our 10th anniversary, and the purpose of it was to publicize the need for jetties at Oregon Inlet. They want, and they believe that the uh, legal process has run its course, and they're supposed to have the jetties. After all, the Congress voted to give them jetties on December 31st, 1970, and here it is, 1989, and they still haven't. Jetty gone. proposal started with the Reagan era, then into the Bush era, Clinton era back to the Bush era, and was finally canceled. The real problem is it went through too many hands, too many caretakers. It was on too many desks and too many pens. In June of 2003, the Center of Environmental Quality decided to pull the plug on the jetty proposal. Oregon Inlet is used daily by hundreds of fishermen as they make their way in and out to sea. This time of year, there are a lot of trawlers that uh, work the coast of the, of the North Carolina Outer Banks. What they're catching right now is mainly flounder. Uh, this time of year, they catch a lot of flounder trawling offshore, also a lot of trout, and you'll see a lot of trawlers this time of year up and down the beach. 75% of our sales have been cut because of Oregon Inlet in the last 10 years. That's a fact. This year, there's a two and a half or three million pound finder quota for North Carolina. 
back in the good old days, this inlet here got three fourths of them. Now you know what we're getting, two percent. The Oregon Inlet is a shallow draft inlet, having the reputation of the most dangerous inlet on the East Coast. Nighttime, you got the big LED lights facing forward and you see all this white lighting up in front of you and you know it's, you can't turn around. Once you commit, you can't turn around the brakes. It's like we have to go through here now. That's the point where you just hope everything's on your side because the next few minutes trying to get past the last breaker, you're working on a lot of skill, but there's always a certain amount of luck involved. Norfolk to Moorhead City is the longest stretch on the East Coast, the way the crow flies without a safe harbor. You get trapped out there, there is no harbor of refuge within 100 miles north or south. Because Oregon Inlet is not a safe harbor. kids jumping off the top of the boats to the uh, people up here drinking their iced tea. The festival's beneficiary was the Oregon Inlet Users Association. I especially was moved by the blessing of the fleet because I see that the Juan Cheesers do really get into that still. Heavenly Father, we bless this fleet in your precious name, in the name of Jesus. Two, two contenders stepped into the arena. Congressman Murphy. So it has to start somewhere. So today at 11 o'clock this morning in a pro forma session in Washington, we submitted legislation to ask the Secretary of the Army to conduct a feasibility study. This is the most studied inlet in the country. And Miss Katie. This is unprecedented. This is the first in the United States of America of a situation like this with a public-private partnership. This day will go down in one of the greatest days in our history in Dare County. I got a lot of questions. And in 2023, I plan to get down to the bottom of all of them. I wonder it ain't happened more, ain't it? Been a bad, bad couple of weeks for folks in Oregon Hill, ain't it? Ain't no doubt. It ain't as bad as it looks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get wet? <laughs> Did I get wet? Huh. Are you <laughs> serious? <laughs> no, we're dry. Stop by Sea and Sound Tackle and grab a Counter Current Oregon Inlet t-shirt. Locate it next to the Duck Through in Wanchies, North Carolina.